In this video, we will explore perfect squares at a grade 9 level. First though, a reminder that a perfect square is a product of two identical integers. So all of these numbers in the diagonal are examples of perfect squares. And the reason why is because we can multiply the same numbers together to get them. So for example, to get 16, we could do 4 times 4. To get to 25, we could do 5 times 5. To get to 1, we can do 1 times 1. And the reason why I laid out the numbers in red, the perfect squares in a diagonal, is because if you have a multiplication table, the diagonal numbers are perfect squares because you multiply the same two numbers together to get them. The next number on the diagonal would be 36. And we can get 36 by doing 6 times 6. So 36 is a perfect square. But let's prove it using a factor tree. So the goal of a factor tree is to find factors of numbers that multiply together to give you the number on top. So one possible option that we'd have to get to 36 is to do 6 times 6. And we want to keep our factor tree going until we have prime numbers at the bottom of the tree. 6 is still a composite number though. And you can multiply 3 and 2 to get to 6. And same thing on the other side. Now, 2 and 3 are both prime numbers, so our factor tree stops there. And one way to confirm that the number on top is a perfect square is if you have a symmetrical factor tree, like we do here. That is to say we have the same numbers on the left as we have on the right. Now, you might have noticed, though, that for 36, we could have done other factor trees. So, for example, 12 times 3 also gives us 36. If we keep going, 12 is composite, and we can get to that by doing 4 times 3. The 3 here on the right is already prime, so I'm just going to drop it down. 3 is, the two 3's are prime, and now we can simplify 4 to 2 times 2. Now the factor tree in blue is definitely not symmetrical, but the one thing that we notice is that we're able to split up these numbers here on the bottom, the prime factors, into two equal groups. That is to say, in each group we would have 1, 2 and 1, 3. If a factor tree's prime factors can be rearranged into two equal groups like we did here, the number on top of the tree is a perfect square. So that's another way to prove it. Now, perfect squares can also be fractions or decimals. And in that case, to determine if you have a perfect square, you want to decompose what you have just a little bit. So for example, 25, like we saw, is equal to 5 times 5. 49 is equal to 7 times 7. So in this case, the numerator and the denominator both are perfect squares, which means that the whole fraction is a perfect square. So in other words, 25 over 49 is a perfect square. And let's look at one more example. Let's say we have 0 0.4. So in this case, we have a decimal, and what I'm going to suggest for you to do is to change that to a fraction. So 0 0.4 is equal to 4 over 10. When we have a fraction, it's easier to see if all of its components are perfect squares. If they are, then the decimal will be a perfect square, but if one of them or both of them are not perfect squares, then it's not going to work. So let's take a look. 4 is equal to 2 times 2, so 4 is a perfect square. But 10 is not a perfect square. That is to say we can't multiply two of the same whole numbers together to get it. We could do 5 times 2 or 10 times 1, but those aren't the same numbers. So in that case, 0 0.4 is not a perfect square.